I think in this week's video, what I'm going to talk about is just some of the things I look at um, when I when I buy a pig, uh, especially a Cooney Cooney. So uh, we are about to actually we are in the midst of having a pig sale. Um, got some some deals running, I guess. I'm up. Uh, see, Greta went to a new home like two days ago, and I think we're down to 45 pigs. So I got some pigs I want to move. If you're in the market to pick up a pig, just some of the things I look at. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll help somebody out. Anyway, let me shut up. We'll get rolling. Depending on what time of year you're looking at pigs, uh, body composition is going to be a little different. Now it's starting to get real hot lately. You know, the forage isn't as good as it was, you know, a month ago. I'm up in their feed a little bit, but for the most part, all the pigs look good as far as body composition goes. I don't see anybody that's, uh, that's hurting. And that's also, uh, you know, a good sign. Uh, they may have parasites, which is not a deal breaker by any means. Uh, you may see mites this time of year. It's normally not as bad, especially if the pigs have a wallow. Look for a good straight back on a Cooney Cooney. Now, if their head's down, there's gonna be an arch in their back, which is something you should also look for. What you don't wanna see is any kind of sway in that back. And one thing, you know, as I look across all these pigs, and once again, the camera may not do it justice is uh, you know, good straight backs. So that's the first thing I look at uh, when I look at any pig. Now, if you got a pig that's high in the rear end, uh, lower in the front and their head is up, uh, that Cooney's probably mixed with something. Or, you know, if they're saying it's purebred and it's papered, you know, those just aren't characteristics in a Cooney Cooney that I would look for. Uh, you know, you want that nice straight back uh, ears, ears are one of those things that, uh, you know, I like good, big floppy ears like Sailor Girl has here. But the big thing is, is when their head's down, you want ears that are going to cover their eyes. You know, that's a sign of a good grazing animal. You know, it keeps that sun out of their eyes when they're out in the pasture doing what pigs are supposed to be doing. Now, some of them will have ears that'll just flop over and, uh, and make you laugh when they're running. Other ones are gonna have ears that are gonna stand stand straight up. Uh, once again, that's a personal preference. The key thing is, obviously, a couple ears. <laughs> Don't, uh, you know, look for any abnormalities there. And I have had a pig that was deaf. Uh, that's something you may or may not be able to pick up on. So uh, there's always a possibility. Now, granted, that pig was mixed. So I've not had a deaf purebred Cooney Cooney, but I've heard of them, so uh, it's not uncommon. Uh, the next thing, look at waddles. Now, especially if you're getting a registered pig, it depends on what registry you wanna use. I don't consider the lack of waddles a deal breaker, but if you're gonna register pigs with a international Cooney Cooney hog registry, the IKHR, they do not allow you to register pigs without waddles. Waddles are part of the breed standard, however, they're a small portion of what makes up a Cooney Cooney. So if you see an animal that you really like, uh, the lack of waddles, in my opinion, is not a deal breaker. One of my best boars is an unwaddled Mejia Love. Now he is registered with the IKHR because it was called something else and then it became the IKHR, then they made these rules. So you will find unwaddled animals that are registered in there that are grandfathered in before that rule was made. So. Now, if you're registering pigs with the AKKPS, then uh, it's not gonna be an issue. So, uh, look at their snout. If they have a really long snout, uh, you know, and they're not uh, purebred coonies, uh, look at the parents, and hopefully they're papered. Ask to see those papers. Uh, it's uh, any breeder that uh, is selling purebred stock that has registered pigs is not gonna bat an eye at showing you registration papers. So, 
Now, when the pigs are younger, they can look a little muttly, like they could have a slightly longer snout. Some of them don't have as, the jowls aren't as full when they're young as they, you know, as they get when they get older. Like on this pig here, you know, he's got a good fat face. I hate to say it like that. Lemon girl, she's got a good straight back. She's got good ears. She's got a good tail set. Now tail set comes into, sorry, I'm deviating here, but tail set comes into, you'll have pigs that's tails will be high, tails will be low. You know, just make sure nothing looks out of place. Uh, and that's really, you know, if you look at a pig and be like, man, that tail just looks awkward. Uh, you know, maybe there's something going on there. You know, but once again, tails are one of those things that uh, as long as I don't even care if they have a tail, I have one down there right now with the the babies that look like it's had half its tail chewed off in the womb because uh, it was born that way with a little stubby tail. Now coonies, you'll want pretty much a straight tail. You know they'll curl a little bit. If you get a really tight curled tail, is that a deal breaker? No, it's not. But for the most part, coonies should have you know a pretty straight tail. Uh, just look at the tail set, make sure. You know, it's not real low. And if it's real low, they're probably going to have potentially some other issues that are going to stand out. Uh, but yeah, straight back, good ears, uh, good snout. Now, some Cooney breeds have snouts that are longer than others. Some Cooney breeds are more stocky and short. Some of them are slightly taller. What you don't want is a real tall pig. Now, if you look at Juliet here, and once again, her back's arched a little bit, but her head's down. She's got good jowls. She's got double waddles. She does have weak front pasterns. That's her front feet. But for the most part, that's not a deal breaker either for me because when you get pigs out here on soft ground, now if she was on concrete all day, uh, I would probably be a little bit concerned. But now one thing, this is a big borrow right here, is you want not a whole lot of space between that pig and the ground, meaning you want them to be a little, a little shorter but you don't want them so short. Like here's a, a one-year-old gilt that uh, has not farrowed. So she's probably got, I don't know, a good six or seven inches between her and the ground there. Maybe less than that. Now, when she does come in the pig, what I don't want is when she, when her belly drops is for her teats to be dragging the ground. Now they're gonna be close to it because Juliet, all my sows, I mean, it's, their teats will, uh, will almost be touching the ground. And once again, not a problem until it snows. And if you get a little bit of snow on the ground, you got a lot of ice, a lot of moisture, and those teats are hitting the ground, you're gonna have one miserable pig and some potential problems. Trust me, been there, done that. So what you don't want is, is a sow that's not in pig to have a belly that's almost dragging the ground definitely uh the pig may have a weight problem so uh you know just look at look at once again the overall body composition like i said you can look at these pigs here uh, i don't think you know in my personal opinion any of my pigs are overfed underfed i think they do quite well these pigs are real easy keepers for the most part i mean there's food on the ground and that one's over there laying in the wallow obviously they are not starving here so uh, want a little bit of width at the front shoulder, uh, especially in your boars. Uh, I have a, well, here's a borrow right here, but they'll have just a little more meat up front and that's, you know, they'll put on some, what's called armor and I'll take you down and show you the boars, but you'll be able to feel that armor and it's just a protection layer when, uh, when they're doing what boars do and tussling around. So anyway, look at their feet. Like I said, it's not a deal breaker the weak front pasterns. I don't trim pig hooves, never had a problem, uh, except for her. I trim her at least once a year, uh, but you know, sometimes she'll get them broke off. But for the most part, these pigs are out doing what pigs are supposed to be doing. And that's a phrase I love to use because out in the wild, people aren't trimming pig hooves and, and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not trying to raise uh, French poodles here. No offense to the French poodle crowd, but you know, they. You know, you got an animal that gets a lot of care and maintenance to look a certain way. I mean, these are hogs. And, uh, 
and they are what they are. So good straight back, not real high off the ground, good jowls, double waddles. She's got good feet, tail is good. She's got good ears. I mean, when I walk up and look at the pig, I mean, it, it, she's got a good face. Now, some people like the, the really, really smush face Cooney Coonies. Uh, I try to stay away from that. Uh, once again, it's personal preference. I've owned some English Bulldogs and a couple Pugs. Uh, those animals with the smushed up faces always seem to have breathing problems. Uh, none of these pigs so far have had breathing problems. Uh, I don't have a lot of respiratory problems. So I know we got a lot of looking at pigs here, but you know, just trying to, you know, pause the video. If you want to compare what your pig looks like to one of mine. Now, a lot of these are, uh, these are definitely not all the same bloodline. This is a mutt right here. He was out of uh, unregistered uh, sow. And he's got a brother here. Let's see if I can find, oh, he's right there. That was out of an unregistered sow. And same mom, look at the size difference. So I wouldn't say that he was mixed with, with pot belly, but I mean, he's probably a 300 pound pig and see how his face is just a little bit longer than probably what it should be. But he's got some good fat on him. He'll definitely uh, be a good eating hog. We'll test him out this coming fall. So anyway, I have some, some unwaddled gilts in here, some unwaddled borrows. I mean, I got some unwaddled boars down there. We'll walk down and look at the boars in a minute. And then I want to show you some of the babies and, you know, just the differences that you will potentially see when you're looking at smaller pigs. Uh, pretty much every pig up here is uh, over a year or sneaking up on it. These smaller pigs here. What are you doing? You're about to come over here and get on me. You got food on your back. So this is a gilt right here. I think she's a Wilson's Gina. You know, another thing is look at their personality. Uh, hair is gonna be different. Like she has very long hair, curly. Some of the pigs will have shorter hair. Uh, there's no definite single color when it comes to breed standard. That's, uh, that's gonna be personal preference. But coonies are gonna have hair on them. Some of it's gonna be curly and some of it's not. They will blow their coat at certain times, which means they're gonna lose a good portion of their hair. They look like a naked mole rat, and then the hair grows back. I see people freaking out online about it all the time. What's wrong with my pig? Nothing is wrong with your pig. It's uh, just the way it goes. Yeah, I have an unwaddled gilt right here. She's a good looking pig. She's got some good jowls on her. She's got a good straight back. And I don't think that's her sister beside her, but that's out of another sow. I think this one's out of Lemon Girl right there. And this one was out of, where's she at? Out of my sow right over there, which is hazelnut, which is probably my favorite. Uh, I mean, I like the, I like the solid color pigs and hazelnut's probably the, the my, my favorite. I hate to say that, but uh, she's a, uh, just a solid black pig. Ain't nothing special about her color. Uh, now, Lemon Girl here, she's she's a cream, but she has a belt on her, and it really sticks out when you get her wet. Because up underneath that white coat, she's got pretty much black skin, except for the belt that that runs around her. I don't know if you can see it there. It's hard for me to tell what's going on in my camera because of the sun. But yeah, these are. Uh, just some of the things I look for. Like I said, I don't make a big production out of it. I don't, I'm not a pig judge. What I am is a judge of what I like. And spend some time with the pigs. Ask a lot of questions of the breeder that you're gonna buy a pig from. Make sure that they're available after you buy that pig and you leave. You know, there's gonna be, uh, you know, just until you learn your animal, it may do something and you're like, oh my goodness, what's going on? Uh, ask about vaccinations. They should give you when the last time that pig was vaccinated. Now, I don't go overboard with vaccinations. I pretty much, uh, you know, parasite control. Watch out, sweetie, I need to hop out of here. And that's about it. 
So unless they need something else, an antibiotic or something along those lines, I do not mess with them. Yeah, and another thing to remember is Cooney Coonies are slow growing pigs. They will not reach maturity till they're about three years old. So if you go and look at a, you know, a six month old pig, don't expect to see, you know, a 275 pound hog, especially if you're used to uh, a more traditional pig. So this is Goose right here. If I can get him to slow down, he wants some loving. So Goose is a Mejia love that we brought to the farm. <laughs> oh, now you're gonna run off? That we brought to the farm last year there. And uh, he's gonna be one of our breeders going forward. For some reason my zoom wasn't working. So Darby's got a good straight back on him. You know, unfortunately, Romeo here, he's got a pretty, pretty decent confirmation. He's a little taller than I would like, but he is not viable. So, uh, and you know, if you look at this pig, there's nothing about him that says that he can't get a sow pregnant. So it's, uh, it's tough if you buy an unproven boar, you are running the risk that that boar is not gonna be viable. Uh, it's gonna be no fault to the breeder, no fault to the pig. It's just, uh, you know, Mother Nature has has her ways. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're shopping for a boar. Now, this is my Mejia Love boar, Wiz, who is unwaddled, good jowls, uh, close to the ground, very solid, robust pig. I mean, he is, I mean, I love this pig. He's got good armor on him. I mean, he is, he's wide across the back, very solid good temperament i like his ears if he was waddled he would be uh, uh he would be just a ringer in my opinion uh, he's got good feet good solid base on him now some pigs will be a little a little more dainty in the legs uh, especially when it comes to the sows it seems to be a little more prominent we kept these boars intact because they're just good looking pigs and i'd like to see these genetics go on to somebody else's farm so if you're in the market for a boar, these are all Tutaki boars. Uh, you know, Darby there, he's not a 300 pounder, but I guarantee you he's a lot more solid than he looks. But you look at the difference between a Tutaki and a Mejia Love, and then you got Wizzo, I think he's a Tonganui. I'm sorry, Romeo is a Tonganui. He's uh, got a little more space between him and the ground. Once again, a little leaner of a hog, uh, a little bit longer. Now he's also getting old, so he's not, you know, he has passed his prime, but there was a point, I mean, obviously he still, uh, he still doesn't take any crap, especially off these little pigs. These two don't mess with him either. Um, he was a lot more robust. So as pigs get old, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Especially if you go to buy a boar and he looks a little thin, he may not be a little bit older than, uh, than you're potentially being told. But uh, I don't know of any Cooney Cooney breeders that are uh, intentionally trying to, to uh, you know, not disclose anything that's going on in their herds. For the most part, the people who have these pigs love them. Uh, they love the breed for what it is and you know, wanna share that with other people. Sure, well, let's go up here and look at some babies. And... <laughs> Romeo, you let that pig alone. So, all right, sorry. The last thing I'm going to say is look at the at the testicles on the boars. Uh, if it's cold, they may not be that pronounced. Uh, if the weather's out, they may be really pronounced. So, you know, these are, are typical boar jewels right here. They're you know, what you see is what you get. But once again, you know, you don't want any testicles that are really high on the pig. Because um, once again, you know, the, the math I've heard, the science is, you know, within a couple degrees of how those, those testicles hang on a, on a pig can determine whether or not they're going to be viable. Uh, I don't think that's something that you're going to sort out with... Uh, with human eye, I don't think there's any way other than having a boar that's bred a sow and she's taken uh, to determine whether or not, or unless you get a sample and send it off to the lab and have it checked, 
which I wouldn't want to be part of that process. But, uh, you know, that's, you're not going to tell just by looking at a pig whether or not it's viable. Now, granted, if you're buying a, a borrow, uh, it ain't going to reproduce. So with that said, you know, make sure that uh, if you're getting a castrated pig that uh, you can ask. Y'all did get two testicles, right? Because I've seen some of the, uh, you know, people talking about, I have a borrow, but it got my sow pregnant. And, you know, when they castrated that hog, they only found one testicle. And just assumed that it only had one. And uh, it didn't. And it ended up becoming viable and impregnated a sow. Now, I watch individual who does our castrations and we uh we find two testicles piglets are running around so anyway just another question to ask but you know you got piglets here that maybe five or six weeks these are about a week older big size difference so is that does that mean anything absolutely not you got seven piglets over here we got six over there Mom's in good condition, both of them are. Uh, these little guys are spunky, running around doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, ears are, ears are down. You know, if I look at piglets and they're near grass, I wanna see them with their heads down doing some, some grazing. Uh, little tails flicking, happy pigs. Uh, these are all little chunky turds. So they are all being well fed, well taken care of. Now, when pigs get weaned, uh, some of that weight's gonna come off because they're not gonna be getting that high fat milk. They're gonna be, you know, on the, hopefully a good 16% uh, pig feed, especially when they're young and growing. Uh, so hopefully no less than, uh, than 13. You know, it depends on what you're feeding them. But yeah, these, these pigs are already on feed now, when you're looking at little pigs, uh, look at their wattles, see how well they're attached. Uh, they only have to be born with wattles. They don't have to, to keep them, uh, per se, but you wanna make sure they're well attached. And some of them will be attached, you know, kind of uh, stringy looking. You know, may not be a pig you wanna buy, especially if you're looking at breeding coonies. Now, there is a breed standard, and there's folks out there who talk about show pigs and and all that, I do not breed show pigs. I breed pigs for their temperament. You know, I want pigs that I can easily handle. Uh, I want pigs that, uh, that perform on pasture, that are easy keepers, and that are not coming from known, uh, you know, lots of health problems. So I have, knock on wood, uh, for the most part, have had a very healthy herd. We, uh, we get the typical mite problems, certain times of the year, worms are an issue. Uh, you're not gonna get around that. These animals eat stuff off the ground. They're gonna end up with worms. So we have a regimen for that, uh, that we take care of. Here's that little pig right here. That's got half a tail, cracks me up. But see them eating grass through the fence here. And we throw weeds into these guys and you know, when we're weeding flower beds and stuff like that and they tear it up so they uh definitely have some good grazing instincts so anyway another squirrel but uh you know just take some time read about the breed standard uh, you know look at the online information there's no shortage of it out there look at uh you know the facebook pages whatever your breeder has just kind of get a feel for their pigs and go take a look. Sorry, I'm sitting down here. Go take a look. Uh, once again, ask questions. You can never ask too many. Uh, normally when we get a farm visit and somebody's looking at buying pigs from us, it usually is a couple hours that, uh, that we spend with that, that individual, that family. You know, we show them our setup. We talk about fencing. We talk about health, we talk about husbandry, we talk about uh, all kinds of stuff. What do, you, what do you feed them? How do you water them? Uh, you name it. Uh, we do a lot of talk about the shelters that I have. Uh, so uh, there's no, 
there's no wrong question to ask. Uh, just do your homework before you you jump into pigs and cooney coonies. Once again, the, the going price for cooney coonies here in the northern Shenandoah Valley in this area is anywhere from 550 to man. I know people sell them for uh, for a thousand dollars plus. It just depends on the bloodline. Uh, Colors are starting to become a little more sought after, especially the banded pigs. Um, so yeah, expect to, uh, you know, pay a little bit if you're gonna get into the pigs, but a lot of people go straight to Craigslist and they'll buy uh, a purebred Cooney Cooney that turns out to not be purebred. But yeah, people are, are crossbreeding these, trying to make the, the next greatest thing. and. Uh, I'm not against that in any way shape or form. It's just not what I'm doing. So I Like the animal for what it is. They're real easy on your property uh, And I know this is getting long and I'm rambling and pontificating here. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, You know, there's a lot to consider when you go to purchase a pig and The key thing is don't go look at pigs not ready to take one home and take one home because it'll uh it could become a very frustrating and stressful situation. Having had a pig that snuck out of what I thought was a secure uh, area and we ended up picking him up, you know, a few towns over. Luckily we found him and, and brought him back. And uh, yeah, not a situation you wanna be in. So anyway, yeah, it's uh, it's been a nice afternoon. Breeze picked up, it's cooling off a little bit. We unloaded 700 pounds of feed. Got all the pigs fed, everybody's happy and watered, and the man is working in the garden. So I think we're gonna probably call this a Saturday and uh, do some video editing. Anyway, I hope this helps somebody out. Like I said, Cooney Coonies are amazing. There's no shortage of information on the internet. Uh, take everything with a grain of salt, even the things that I say. Uh, am I biased in my opinions towards Cooney Coonies? Absolutely. Uh, am I trying to uh, blow smoke up anybody's behind? Absolutely not. I am a uh, pretty pragmatic person when it comes to to raising and taking care of these animals. Uh, they are animals. They're very hardy, very robust. They do well here in the single digit temperatures. They do well here in the, uh, in the upper 90s, low 100 degree temperatures. But when we get those extremes, you know, there are things you have to do to make sure they're taken care of. Uh, you got to have good shelter. You got to have good access to water. You got to have shade um, Good fencing Fencing that they're going to respect and then you have to uh, you know, just take care of your animals So they are a joy to be around uh, But there are times that they will absolutely drive you crazy and they are You know, they have their needs and <laughs> they want their needs met. So it's uh it's a fun adventure. And if you have young children, uh, you know, Coonies are, are great. You know, Clara, she's obviously a teenager now, uh, but we've had Coonies since she was uh, considerably younger. Uh, I never let any kid feed pigs out of their hand. I think that's a bad habit to get into. They do have a very powerful bite and uh, it only takes a second, especially for a youngin, to, uh, to lose a finger and it would be no fault of the pig. I mean, they don't have the, uh, you know, opposing thumb to come up and check something out. You know, they're gonna use their snout and their mouth to, uh, you know, to figure out if something's, you know, something they're gonna eat or not, so. But never had a problem with the pigs around the, uh, the kids. Uh, I'm cautious around the boars because they are boars. They do have tusk. I do not detusk my, my pigs either. Uh, there's times I'll get scratched, but once again, I've never had a uh, a negative interaction with any pig that I have on the farm. Um, pigs that I've had had negative interactions with go elsewhere, uh, preferably to freezer camp. So they, uh, I will not keep a, a nasty animal on the farm, nor would I ever sell one to somebody who was looking just to get into pigs. Uh, you know, as a pet or something like that, there's absolutely no way. And I would not sell a pig to anybody who has small children or grandchildren or anything that's gonna be coming around that I thought would have a, uh, a temperament issue. And Cooney Coonies are very docile. You know, they say that these pigs will never go feral. 
So if you were to cut a Cooney Cooney loose, that it would just continue to do what Cooney Coonies do. And if they saw a human, they would probably come up and expect belly rubs and, and things along those lines. Whereas traditional feeder pigs would, uh, you know, their hair will grow long and they'll grow to, and they'll just go feral and, and be just like a, a wild pig you would see, uh, you know, anywhere else where wild pigs are roaming. So, all right, with that, I'm going to shut up and, and uh, hopefully go get this video out and I can do enough editing that this will not sound like me just rambling on for, uh, for way too long. But anyway, hey, if you watch the video and you got something out of it, uh, you know, hopefully it's, uh, it's good information and you didn't just get a headache. <laughs> but anyway, hey, y'all be good and we'll catch y'all next time. And uh, if you got any questions, you know, just let us know and we'll be as responsive as we can. All right, everybody. Thanks. Have a good one. Rolling with my girl. Thank you.